thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present uh, some uh, joint work here during this workshop. And I would also like uh, to use the opportunity to thank them for allowing me to stay here at this fantastic institute for quite a while. It's a pleasure. Um, so what I'm going to present is um, joint work with uh, Markus Spitzweg and Paul Arne Oestwer. And the, the part on the first uh, homotopy group, I've talked about this, uh, my apologies if you heard about this before. Um, what is new and what is partly in progress um, is the part on Pi 2. So any mistakes that happen during this talk are entirely my own fault and have nothing to do with, with these two. Um, so the, yeah, the, the first restriction is that we take a field of characteristic not two. And the main idea is that um, many invariants associated to this, to a field, naturally live in the morel bobotsky P1 stable homotopy category. So this will be another talk where um, um, this category is used and we have seen some talks during this workshop which gave a somewhat, um, which gave a introduction uh, what this category could be, um, um, maybe somewhat brief, but I will make it even shorter now um, I will just uh, state sort of two properties. This is a triangulated category. Maybe I should write this off. And in particular, it has a shift functor, and this is denoted as the usual suspension functor. Um, and another property is that it's closed symmetric monoidal. I won't need the closed structure. So the symmetric um, product is denoted smash and um, it has a unit and this is my notation for the unit and here I ignore the base field if I want to emphasize the base field I should write an F and this here is really the infinite P1 suspension spectrum of the point with a disjoint base point. Okay, so this is sort of um, to set up a bit of notation. And here's the definition of these homotopy groups, which is perhaps a bit unsatisfactory then. So you take a P1 spectrum in this category and Um, let me define another object in this category. So for, for integers <coughs> s and t, the s plus t alpha sphere is defined to be the simplicial suspension of the t-fold smash power of the multiplicative group pointed by 1. And of course, the associated P1 suspension spectrum of that. Yeah. Um, and then the homotopy groups of this here are the morphisms in the stable homotopy category from the S plus T alpha sphere to E. And this is the abbreviation for the morphisms. And these have been introduced in Tom Bachmann's talk already with a slightly different grading convention. So just um, for comparison purposes, uh, the notation used in Tom Bachmann's talk uh, is switches the sign in front of the T. And another grading convention would be 
to write it like this, but um, I'm trying to use this here. Um, hope that's fine for everyone. Ah, of course, I can, uh, so I can view this slightly more generally. Um, so for every smooth F scheme, one has pi S plus T alpha of E evaluated at X, and that would be the morphisms from an S plus T alpha suspension of X with a disjoint base point to E. So this is then a pre-sheaf on smooth F schemes. And of course, you can look at the associated Nisnevich sheaf uh, you get from that. Um, but I will probably not address these too much. Um, OK, so this is a workshop on K-theory, which dictates that my first example should be algebraic K-theory. So there's a P1 spectrum constructed by Wawotsky uh, in this category. And if we look at this pre-sheaf, evaluate at some x, we um, recover the algebraic k groups as defined by Quillen. So this is index s minus t. This is the first example. And here's a different flavor of uh, K-theory, Hermitian K-theory, and this already figured prominently in Tom Bachmann's talk, so I will use his notation of uh, K-O. Um, so this was constructed by Jens Hornbostel and also using work of Markus Schlichting. And um, this is a bit more complicated with um, um, the indices, I always get this wrong. I hope this is correct. So this is one possible notation for these higher grotendieck wit groups or Hermitian K groups. So these are two examples um, of interesting theories. And of course, I have to mention motivic cohomology. So there's an ironberg mclean spectrum constructed by Wolbotsky, maybe also Suslin. And um, and this pre-sheaf gives the motivic cohomology with coefficients in Z. And of course, you can take other coefficients here if you like. And let me just emphasize one, one special case, because this gives us a, a third flavor of K-theory, which appears then in this talk. Um, so pi zero plus T alpha of this here. This is then the Milner K-theory of F. Um, Uh, pardon? Uh, here? Yeah. yeah. So if I don't write uh, a smooth scheme behind it, this is sort of the, the first definition of just the coefficient group evaluated at the point. Yeah. And this is actually going to be my major case of interest. So from this here, it follows that every P1 spectrum, every object in this category is a module over uh, the sphere spectrum, the unit. So on all these uh, these groups here, sort of the homotopy groups of the sphere spectrum act. So it's an interesting question to ask what these groups actually are. And yeah, there would be a quite a long list of contributions to what this group here is for specific fields and in low degrees. And there are uh, many people contributed, uh, Mark Levine, um, uh, Alexei Ananievsky, Vanya Panin, uh, Wilson Erstwer, Hello Ormsby, uh, Tom Bachmann. There are several um, 
people who have worked on this. I will um, not write this all down. Instead, I want to give a definition of another flavor of K-theory, which is this Milner-Witt K-theory, and this has already been mentioned in several talks. So you can stop me now from giving a definition of Milner-Witt K-theory using generators and relations. You want to stop me? Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, Okay, excellent. This saves me some time. And I can give you the theorem that Morel proved. But I won't give you the chance to stop me from writing down this theorem. <laughs> um, because there is a map going to, yeah. Of the zero line of stable homotopy groups of the sphere spectrum. So in order to define it, you have to check what are the generations and the relations, where do we have to send them. Um, so this here is a unit in the field, so it gives us basically a morphism. Um, from uh, the field to the multiplicative group, and this element here goes to the Hopf map, which you can view as the canonical projection from A2 minus 0 to P1, or also the Hopf construction on GM. And this is an isomorphism. Um. Of created rings. Um. Okay, and in order... Yeah, we, we've seen this already. Um, of course, you can uh, turn this into Milner K-theory if you quotient out um, the ideal generated by the Hopf map. Um, in order to state the computation then for pi 1 and pi 2, um, I'm going to use the definition that Tom Bachmann already gave. So little ko is a very effective cover of big KO, so this is whatever this spectrum is and whatever this filtration is now, I'll give some details later if you want me to, it's a certain cover associated with the emission K-theory P1 spectrum. Yeah. And its formal properties are basically as good as for Hermitian K theory. It's also a ring spectrum. And in particular, it receives a unit map from the sphere spectrum because the sphere is very effective. Here's the theorem, the unit map from the sphere to little ko, and uses um, sequences. The first one um, looks like this. So this is Milner K theory, mod 24. And there's pi 1 of the sphere and pi 1 of little ko. And for pi 2, there's Milner K theory mod 2. And then there's a different 
group. Um, so this is um, the motivic homology group of F modulo 24. Um, and this describes the kernel of the unit map on pi 2. Okay, so this is what the unit map induces and if the characteristic of f is zero, um, these are exact sequences. And if the characteristic of f is odd, these are exact at least after inverting the characteristic. Okay, so these are um, some computations and let me just illustrate these computations by making them slightly more concrete. So here are some examples. Um, we can look here at the case where t is 2. Then we have um, the zeroth Miller cable of f. So this is the integers. This is the integers mod 24. So we get that pi 1 plus 2 alpha of the sphere. This is c mod 24. And one can. Uh, describes a generator as the second Hopf map and this is actually yeah it's the attaching map for the quationic projective plane which appeared in Jens talk for example um, this here oh yeah this goes away um, so pi 1 plus T alpha of K O is a zero for all T uh, at least two. And in fact, a similar thing happens for the sphere as well. So this is zero for all T um, greater than two. So this is sort of, when you increase T is the last non-zero value and it's constant, Z mod 24. Um, this is one example, but of course you can write down a different element in the stable homotopy groups of spheres. In fact, you have the topological Hopf map. So this is in the topological first stable homotopy group of the sphere. So this maps into pi 1 plus 0 alpha of the unit over any field. And the image, uh, well has the same name. And then you can write down a different element here, namely um, eta squared eta top. And this turns out to be 12 times. Yeah. So this is one example of a relation between uh, certain generators one can write down. But you, yeah. Let me write down something for um, pi 2 now. So for pi 2, we have pi 2 plus 4 alpha. So this is the case when you, when t is 4, then here you have a z mod 2. This here is 0 in this case, and also this here is, is 0. Um, okay, so this here is generated by precisely the, the square of the generator here. And uh, yeah, there's also a relation, if you like relations. So there's another element. You multiply uh, this generator here, nu, with eta top. This gives you something in pi 2 plus 2 alpha. But there's another element you can write down, namely, oh shoot. Um, so this here is in 
pi 2 plus 4 alpha and I multiply with minus 1 twice to, to bring it down and these two agree. Um, let's see. Ah yeah, and this is, this is again constant here and pi 2 plus t alpha of the sphere is 0 for all t at least 5. No questions? You didn't tell us about the low, low dimensional values of t. So for example, 2 plus 0 alpha, 2 plus 1 alpha, 2 plus 2 alpha. Are they just immediate from vanishing of the sequence? Yeah, one can um, say something for, for these. It depends on what what the homotopy groups of little ko are then. And if the t is non-negative, then these homotopy groups are the same for um, uppercase ko. And one can write down something. Let me give you one example, since you're asking. So for example, pi 2 plus 1 alpha of the sphere. So uh, t being um, one, then this motivic cohomology group vanishes, and the only thing we have here in the kernel um, is Milner K theory in degree three mod two. And I can give you the image. In this case, it's the 24th roots of unity, so this is exact. And what does this have to do with little k o? Well, this sits inside the units of the field, and this is pi 2 plus 1 alpha of little k o, and this here is then the unit map. This would be one, one example. Um, yeah. Actually, the, the workshop title, did it include some arithmetic? Yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is this, does this qualify as arithmetic? <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, let's see. So, so what you can see from here is that the for, so for pi 1, the, the unit map is a surjection, uh, but for pi 2, it is not in general surjective, and it's sometimes even 0. Maybe this is also um, 2 plus 2 alpha. So pi 2 plus 2 alpha of little k o, this is also known as the zero symplectic k group of the field. So this is the group of even integers. Um, and well, this here is known to be torsion. Well, one can get it from the computation here, but it is also torsion, for example, by a result due to Anjanievsky, Levine and Panin. So this here is the zero map. Yes? Pardon? No, no, no. So what do you mean this is the new 24? Oh, it's the 24th roots of unity. This might be of f. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I should have an f everywhere. So sometimes it could just be the group Z mod 2. OK. Um, is this enough? Or speaking of explicit values? OK. So um, because I would like to mention one thing, I was curious about this. And I was foolish enough to mention, well, in topology, you know that pi 2 Well, it's generated by things that come from pi 1, but this here is not subjective. Yeah.
Yeah, just in case you wondered. I wondered about this, but it's not subjective. So it's another difference when you compare with the topological situation, because in, in topology, uh, also the unit map uh, to little ko is, um, it's an uh, isomorphism also in degree two, so in particular subjective in degree two, and, and here it is not. So there are some differences. Then I should make one comment, I didn't really introduce this, but you can think of this as the F points of a uh, sequence of uh, sheaves, of Nisnevich sheaves, and by Morel's theory of strictly A1 invariant sheaves, at least for a perfect field, um, we in fact get exactness as, um, as sheaves, as Nisnevich sheaves, not just sort of on the, on the global sections. But um, this is just a, a side remark. Um, you might wonder why this could be interesting. And uh, here again, I can refer to something that Jens explained. You might be interested in the question whether a given bundle splits off a trivial line bundle. And um, there's been work by Aravind Azok and Jean Fazel on this question. And they treat this question using unstable um, homotopy groups. Oh, what do I do here? Oh, yeah. So they look at really this, this uh, variety pointed at a point, and then you have unstable homotopy groups and this maps to a corresponding unstable homotopy group of, say, the infinite P1 loop space associated to KO. There's a certain KO degree map which corresponds to the, to the unit here. Uh, and if this here has Muller K2 um, mod 24 as kernel, then Murthy's conjecture is true. And the Murthy's conjecture treats the, the case which is sort of one below what uh, Jens Hornbostel mentioned. So it's about um, a rank N vector bundle on X smooth affine of dimension N plus one. So oh, what's the name? Um, uh, this splits off a line bundle if and only if the top churn class vanishes. And for this application, so this is smooth affine over an algebraically closed field. So this is a geometric application, but I have to warn you, um, this is an unstable homotopy group. This is a P1 stable homotopy group. It gives the correct answer, but we cannot really match these two because we don't have a P1 Freudenthal suspension theorem yet. In this year? No, because if, if you take the nth contraction, then this cancels sort of, yeah. So this is precisely, this, this here stabilizes to pi 1 plus 0 alpha of this thing. Yeah. Okay, so I cannot even sell you this as an application, but it's a potential application, and I know some people are working on a P1 Freudenthal suspension theorem. I mean, if you're interested, um, so what Azok to proves together with uh, Kirsten Wickelgreen and Ben Williams is that if you look at pi 4 plus 5 alpha, unstable, of what's the sphere? It's the 3 plus 3 alpha sphere. Um, then this is, in fact, isomorphic pi 1 plus 2 alpha of the sphere spectrum. So this is a stable group. So they compute this to be 
uh, ZMOD 24 with the same generator, but this, this computation uses that F contains a quadratically closed uh, subfield. So let me just write F equals F bar here. Yeah, this, this should be the same for every F, but yeah, that's, that's due to their techniques. Right, so this would be a potential application for Pi 1. If you have a potential application for Pi 2 coming from affine geometry, even over the complex numbers, please let me know. Yeah. I'm really interested. So I gave you the chance of not hearing about the definition of Minovit K theory. Now I give you the chance of not hearing about the proof of this theorem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's too late. Uh, plenty of time left. So the main technical ingredient is the slice filtration, which is due to Wawatsky and which was mentioned and it was defined. This was example two in Tom Bachmann's talk. So you can check your notes now and Okay, um, let me recall the definition. So, the effective subcategory is defined as the localizing subcategory generated by the suspension spectra of smooth schemes. Um, so this would be the, the zero part um, so what's a friendly color? Maybe this here. And you can shift this around. So here's the nth shift and any integer now. Because we're P1 stable, we can P1 suspend this back and forth. So this sits inside the, oh wait. The whole stable homotopy category. So this is IN, and this inclusion has a right adjoint. And then one defines the nth filtration to be the composition, sort of the interesting composition. It receives a map from FN plus 1, and the cone um, is, uh, can be defined canonically, functorial, and this is then the nth slice. So this goes to the suspension of Fn plus 1. Uh, so this is a distinguished triangle. Mm. So in Tom Bachmann's talk, two other filtrations came up, one of them being the homotopy T structure and the other the very effective. Um, so the difference sort of in the very effective is that don't take the localizing subcategory, but just generate it under homotopy co-limits and extensions, and you move this around with this functor. So this, in some sense, uh, defines the, the very effective cover. But the nice thing about the slice filtration is that it is triangulated. These are all triangulated functors, and 
for some reason this makes computations actually possible. So here are some sample computations. The nth slice of algebraic K theory is the n-fold P1 suspension of motivic cohomology. This gives you the um, spectral sequence relating motivic cohomology and algebraic K theory. So I should say that this is due to Wawatsky and also Levine. And um, let's see yeah, the computation. So this actually enters the computation of the slices for Hermitian K theory. So this is a two n-fold GM suspension of, and now there's a two n suspension of motivic cohomology with integral coefficients, and then a two, min two n minus two suspension of mod two motivic cohomology, and this continues. So you have two n minus four. continues infinitely. These are the even slices, the odd slices sort of look the same, except that you don't have the integral part. So this would be Yeah, so this was computed by Paul Arne and myself. And in fact, this allows us to also compute the slices for the very effective cover of Hermitian K theory. And what happens then is that you sort of truncate these infinite sequences. They now look as follows. You have a, a GM suspension. on and you stop at the last non-negative uh, integer. Same for the odd slices. Okay. This is a computation one can make. So your formula was suggesting that you only have even suspensions, and now you have similar suspensions. Now this is also um, even suspensions. Yeah, it becomes more interesting if you consider Hermitian K theory mod 2, then you get these guys in every dimension. But there are people in the audience who can tell you more about this. Um, the mod 2 case. Very exciting. Um, but I have to get uh, to the slices of the sphere. And there's the following theorem which was proved also by Levine and Wawotsky. And let, let me just um, uh, state our names here as well, because at least we contribute something really new for the multiplicative structure. Um, so also the slices of the sphere can be computed. And this is actually a, a difference to the a very effective Filtration. So far, I don't have seen a computation of all slices. 
a very effective slice of the sphere, but these can, in some sense, be written down. Maybe you won't be too satisfied with the answer, but in some sense, it's true. So we have a finite sum here, and what comes up here is the E2 page of the adams novikov spectral sequence. And this is M2M, M U star. So this is an object which is known from topology in the sense that it is studied and that it has been computed extensively in, uh, in low degrees. Um, so this is, in fact, a multiplicative isomorphism. So if you consider this here as the graded slice, it has a multiplicative structure. Uh, same is true here. Um, and this is actually useful for some computations. Let me just, instead of, yeah, maybe I should say one, one word. So this is proven via the, um, the Adams resolution of the sphere using MGL. And um, the sort of the behavior of MGL as the universal oriented theory is, is governed by the Lazar ring. And this is the ring that comes up here. So a new star. Um, okay, yeah. I made a statement about the unit map from the sphere to KO, connective Hermitian K theory. And in order to prove this, I have to understand how the unit map looks like on slices. So now here's the unit map, and here's the zero slice. So this is just HZ, and this is also um, HZ, and the map is an equality. So the one slice is the GM suspension, and here I have HZ mod 2, and this is also HZ mod 2, and this is again an equality. Um, the two slice, there I have a GM smash 2 suspension, uh, and here I have something slightly different, an HC mod 2, and a suspension of HC mod 12. And here I have HC mod 2 and a twofold suspension of HC. And now there's something interesting happening because these are not equal. So the matrix that describes this map here is the following. So this here is the connecting map coming from the coefficient sequence where you multiply on the integers with 12. Okay, so this is the two slice. Um. There's a mod 2 and there's a mod 12. Um, you mean this this year? This year should be a Z, yeah. yeah. So actually, if a Z comes up, it's sort of the biggest one, the one with uh, the highest suspension degree. So, and here, yeah, th this is one of uh, this is just one mistake, and now it's even on video. I should have followed the same order here as I did there, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, Okay, I would like to continue this just a little. So the three slice. This is a threefold GM suspension, and here for the for the sphere again, you have HC mod two, and then a twofold suspension of HC mod two, and you have the same for KO. And on the four slice. There's a fourfold suspension, um, and these guys, they now persist to infinity. But here's a second guy coming in with the same suspension, and this is the one that detects um, nu squared. But there's a fourth term, and this is a threefold suspension of HC mod 
240. So there are, are these Bernoulli numbers um, coming up in the alpha family. So again, there's a map to the corresponding four slice of little ko, and this looks simpler. Um, let's see. Yeah, and again, this can be described as a matrix which starts off being the identity matrix. The guy detecting new squared maps to zero, and then there's something happening here where I don't really care what it is. So to be honest, I think this is precisely the connecting map coming from multiplication by 240, but I'm not sure about the five. I'm sure about the two power and about the three, but not about the five. So let me just write, yeah, let, let me write nothing there. Okay? It's not relevant for the computation. What re is relevant for the computation now is that if you take Sn for n at least five, the slice looks as follows. You have an n-fold GM suspension and these two guys, they persist. And the next one doesn't affect um, the pi 2 computation. It starts in dimension 3. Um, and yeah, there are finitely many terms coming here. They all correspond to motivic homology with finite coefficients. Let's not worry so much about that. And then there's the corresponding picture here. And here's something in 4. And this starts off with the identity matrix. There's something here, there's something, oh no, there's zero here, there's zero here, there's something here. So this is the picture on slices. And the nice thing is that this behavior on slices can be deduced from knowledge of the first differential and the multiplicative structure. Is that to be of the triangular matrix as well? Yes, yes, for sort of uh, for uh, dimension reasons. Again, I bothered you with writing down many explicit terms. My apologies. Um, but from this there, one can make a computation. One can compute the E2 page of the slice spectral sequence for the sphere and also for little ko, at least um, when it comes to pi 0, pi 1, and pi 2. This can be computed, and also the map can be computed, and the kernel of this here looks like the associated graded with respect to the terms I, I gave you in the theorem. Oh, uh, gives Kernel. Um, stated in the theorem. And of course you have to figure out uh, non-trivial extensions here, but the nice thing is that the non-trivial extensions can be determined by looking at topology. And in fact the, the third topological homotopy group so pi 1 plus 2 alpha maps to topological pi 3. And this map is, in fact, an isomorphism for a subfield of the complex numbers. So this clarifi clarifies basically the, the extensions that come up there. And um, then there's a proposition. Which says that 
for the slice spectral sequence when pi 1 and pi 2 is concerned that the E2 page already determines the infinity page. So the description of the kernel is actually the, the same as the description of the inf e infinity pages. And just a warning, on pi 3, the E2 page um, for the sphere is not the e infinity page. And this follows from work of Du and Isaacson, who made extensive uh, computations um, over the complex numbers and also over the reals. So this is really fantastic work. And this sort of tells us that here um, for pi 3 we have to work a bit harder. And I'm not going to do that now. Um, but there's a question now. And this is basically the, the convergence question. So to what does the slice spectral sequence converge? Because we can make a computation here, but we have to relate it to the actual um, values. So in order to explain this, just a quick definition, I introduced the slice filtration. So it comes equipped with co-unit maps from the nth filtration of E back to E. And again, the canonical cofiber exists. Um, so for example, G1 of E of, of the sphere, G1 of the sphere, this is just the zero slice of the sphere. So we have a tower here of the F ends, and we get a similar tower for the G ends. And what the slice spectral sequence actually computes is the homotopy limit of this tower. So let me define this as C of E. It's defined to be the homotopy limit where n goes to infinity. So this is the, the P1 spectrum you get by building up uh, from the slices, at least if you can I mean, if you have an effective spectrum, you start with the zero slice, and from there you build up um, the spectrum using the slices. And then sometimes this is the same as E, and sometimes it is not. Let me just mention two theorems. One is due to Levine. So if the cohomological dimension of the base field is finite, then the natural map from E to its slice completion is an equivalence um, for all compact objects. So this is a very strong convergence statement, but it comes with a price to pay, a restriction on the cohomological dimension, and there are many interesting fields which do not satisfy this. And for this reason, there's another convergence theorem, which I could state uh, slightly more generally, but here I'm only interested in the sphere. So the slice completion of the sphere is naturally equivalent to the eta completion of the sphere. So I think I have um, enough time to write down, to fill one for the blackboard.
Actually, in order to prove this, this theorem on the slice and the eta completion, uh, you have to try to prove this theorem more generally, and the class of P1 spectra for which we were able to prove this is cellular ones of finite type. And there are sort of, ah, this, <coughs> I forgot to mention something. So, um, so um, for example, the motivic einberg mclean spectrum is cellular of finite type and characteristic zero, but in positive characteristic, you have to invert the characteristic in order to be sure about this. And this is actually also a restriction for the slice computation that I've failed to mention. So this computation of the slices of the sphere works in characteristic zero, as I stated, but in odd characteristic, you have to invert the characteristic throughout in order to be sure about this. There's work in progress which tries to remove this assumption. But yeah. Okay, um, let me finish this uh, quickly. So the slice spectral sequence computes the homotopy groups of the eta completion and we can relate the eta completion of the sphere to the sphere by using also the eta inverted sphere. And then we get a Cartesian diagram um, like this. And from this Cartesian diagram, we get a long exact sequence of homotopy groups. And in order to get what we want, there are sort of three or several vanishing statements. And the first vanishing statement comes from the computation of, of the E infinity page of the slice spectral sequence. So, so this is, if T is bigger than two, then this here vanishes and for pi two, this is for T bigger than four. So if we invert eta, this means that we can ignore this parameter here. So from this, we get that pi one plus T alpha for any T of this sphere is zero. And the second vanishing statement is that this here is, yeah, maybe you should write it down here, this error is actually true without the eta completion. And so this has also been obtained by Tom Bachmann. And then there's a very small ingredient now, um, which concerns the connecting map I three plus um, T alpha, mapping down to pi two plus T alpha of the sphere. And this here is the zero map. And then this can be shown by, well, analyzing the map in the sequence before, where again the, the eta completion is involved. And these vanishing results together give us that pi one for the sphere is the same as pi one for the eta completed sphere and the same for pi two. Thank you. So the question is about the, the, the finiteness of the motivic stable so groups. One, one group yes, yes. Um, right, so the, the question concerning finite uh, generation is an interesting one. 
And it is, of course, a question of um, what your basic module should be. Should it be finitely generated as an abelian group or rather as a module over pi zero, so over the Milner bit K theory? Yeah. Um, let's see. So, um, with these terms in the, in the kernel that came up, there was sort of Milner K theory where we know that it's finitely generated as a module over Milner bit K theory, but there's also this um, sort of motivic cohomology group mod 24. Uh, for example, in a certain degree, this is a K3 indecomposable mod 24. I do not know of any sort of finite generation results for this as, as a module over, over Milner bit K theory, but I'd be pleased to, to hear about that. So actually what, what this already shows, um, so Dan Duggar and Dan Isaacson, they asked whether pi one is already generated by um, um, this Hopf map nu and the first topological Hopf map. And this is not the case because the contribution form KO also contains in certain degree a K3 in the composable. And for example, for the Gaussian rationals, this contains a free group of rank one, if I don't, if I remember correctly. So, so this is nothing which can be generated by elements of order 24 or two. So the, the, the question of, of finite generation is interesting and deserves to be further studied. Oh, no, no, uh, it cannot be true. Uh, for example, for pi zero, uh, it is not true because on pi zero, for example, here you have the Grotendieck bittering and here you ha then have the uh, for higher ones. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, we... Um, what I can say is that there is a sort of a vanishing statement which uses this where sort of the simplicial um, index here is congruent to one or two mod four. Yeah, so this, um, there you can um, get such a vanishing. For example, if, if you like these kind of uh, statements, Using this, you can prove that pi 61 plus, what do I have to write, 123 alpha. Yeah, this actually coincides because 61 is congruent to one mod four with this here, and this can then be shown to be um, zero. So there's a uh, joint work with Kyle Omsby and again Paul Arne that, that enters this.